Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about the apostolic ministry, and uh, we will continue from where we stopped. We said that in the early church, the apostles had a certain function, and we talked about each one of those. We listed out teaching, we listed out signs, wonders, and miracles, church administration, church government, preaching, leadership authority. Uh, they were the targets of persecution. They strengthened the local church, and they also expanded into new territory. So this is how these apostles led the early church. As we go further, beyond the apostles of the Lamb, we have other apostles such as Paul. Paul, we know, is uh, one of the founding apostles. Uh, later, uh, or actually before Paul, is Barnabas. Right? Barnabas, who uh, is a, a Levite, a godly man, generous man, uh, encouraging uh, personality. He is also in leadership. And he is the one who's actually instrumental uh, in bringing Paul into the picture. So Barnabas, uh, one of the apostles. Uh, there are names of others mentioned, and they are termed as apostles. That is why we are you know, listing them out here. Uh, and the scripture references are given uh, in the notes. Uh, you have Andronicus, Junior, excuse me, Silas or Silvanus, Timothy, Titus, James, the Lord's brother, uh, 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 are some of the other names of apostles. In case you're wondering, you know, uh, apart from the 12 apostles, who are other apostles? So these are the people who are called as apostles also. Uh, now, why are they called? Maybe the features that we enlisted just now, they carry some of those features. And uh, that is what, you know, multiple features. Uh, and because of that, it marks them as apostles. So let's continue to discuss you know, these characteristics. We've understood the characteristics from the apostles of the Lamb. Now, what are these characteristics you know, as we look at Paul's life also? We'll include Paul's life and uh, the lives of other apostles in the Bible. So what are the uh, features of the apostolic ministry? Now, as I started off, saying we cannot have a fixed formula uh, because if you look at the life of Paul and if you look at the uh, let's say the life of uh, Timothy uh, according to us we categorize them differently but when the Bible points out that you know even Timothy in couple of places first Thessalonians 1 1 verses 2 uh, uh, first Thessalonians 2 6 he is referred to as an apostle. So then you wonder, oh, okay, uh, Timothy did not work the way Paul did, but he's still called as an apostle. So there's no formula or a fixed um, uh, method with, with which we can look at someone and identify them. Uh, you know, we'll have to take it case by case and look at the features uh, and be led by the Spirit of God to actually term them as an apostle. So what are these features? What are some of the traits uh, of this ministry gift of the apostolic? Uh, the operation of this gift uh, is such that you know we see that those who are called as apostles are generally called to a specific work. Or we might even say specific people. When we look at Apostle Paul, we know that he was called to the Gentiles. Primarily, that was what was he not preaching to the Jews? He was, but ultimately, a lot of his work was for the Jews, uh, for the Gentiles. Now, if you consider Peter, uh, and Paul states this uh, in in uh, what he's saying, he, he states in one of the scriptures that uh, Peter was for the circumcised, or he was saying that Peter's primary ministry was to the Jews. So you notice. The apostolic, generally you're called to a work or you're called to a people group. Now, not always uh, is it a people group, but it can be a work, a certain kind of work that God uh, wants us to do. So that's how we would understand it. Now, I know that many of us have that understanding, apostolic, oh, I am called to Africa, I'm called to uh, you know, South America. So a region, 
we go by the region we go by the people i'm called to the uh, indians i'm called to the uh, uh, you know uh, australians something like that but in today's understanding we'll see later it's not so much just that we could even look at the apostolic as call to the field of media or call to business okay i'll come to that later and that's what we have to understand call to a specific work and could be a specific people also but not necessarily okay so that is one feature uh, as we look at the apostles in the bible now going forward uh, they have a distinct work in establishing uh, the local churches when we see what uh, paul writes in first corinthians chapter 3 uh, you know he states that he was the one who actually uh, laid the foundation of that church but later on he says he talks about Ap apollos apollos came and he watered so he did the uh, groundwork Apos apollos came and he did the little more building strengthening the church sort of a work so even there there is an understanding of what kind of work usually god gives to an apostle you might find that an apostle lays the foundation moves on lays the next foundation moves on lays the next foundation moves on moves on moves on so it depends on what god has called that person to do so that might be the nature of their apostolic work okay so uh, even the distinct work that god gives to that individual and in this case paul's case it was establishing and building up local churches uh, the other feature is stepping into open doors open doors now we know as we look at uh, the life of uh, apostle paul he was praying he was seeking god for open doors so once uh, he and barnabas were set apart for uh, you know the ministry to which god called them the missionary journey started so how did the missionary journeys actually take place uh, uh, paul was waiting on the lord for guidance ha huh. let's go this is an open door this territory is open and you remember the macedonian call he wanted to enter asia but ultimately he had a uh, you know he he had a vision and a man from macedonia was calling him so open doors they had open doors to the unreached and so he went in those areas and what did he do actually stepping into those open doors caused the opening up of territories for the gospel so then the gospel went into macedonia and that entire region you, know, you have all those uh, cities of uh, philippi neapolis so over there and all he apollonia all those places he was able to share the gospel he was able to do the work the powerful work of god over there that he moved on right so from there he moved on you have he went to the akea region he went to the galatia region so new territories where he actually established the work of god and similarly even today we'll come to it later but i'm just giving you uh, a picture so it need not be physical territories it could be some you know like as i i took the example of media something new in the field of media new territories to conquer uh, new things to pioneer so god can use it the, this is how the apostolic ministry works okay uh, apostolic grace on a person's life will cause these things to happen then uh, we already said that the power gifts of god are uh, uh, functioning so whenever we we talk about a uh, calling right uh, in the supernatural keys to the supernatural we studied that the grace of god the grace and the gift of god we must recognize that because when god calls us for something he will empower us there will be grace there will be gifts that accompany even the power gifts of god that is the gifts of the holy spirit will accompany and uh, we know from the lives of these apostles wonderful miracles were done the mighty miracles were done through their lives and similarly today when the apostolic is moving into new regions trying to establish the work uh, we will find some amazing supernatural things take place because of the the grace and the gifts of god which have been given and which are you know uh, part of that calling now moving along revelatory gifts 
of the spirit so under the revelatory gift what do, uh, what comes there um, you know we can have a deeper understanding of the word of god and not just that the operation of the gifts of the spirit and the revelatory gifts there where god releases prophetic words uh, or uh, you know discerning of uh, what needs to be done uh, and word of wisdom word of knowledge revelation that god provides supernaturally to these people in order for them to do the work so as i told us even macedonian call now paul is wondering where do i go what do i do but god is working through revelation helping him understand and this equipping of the revelatory gifts is not just for direction but also regarding the word of god i already said that we cannot uh, re you know like you can't uh, uh, get back into founding the scriptures because it's already done it's been established for us but can the scriptures have deeper understanding without changing the integrity of the word of god yes it's possible as we go forward with god and in the moves of god see for example the baptism in the holy spirit it was always there in the bible but something happened in the 1900s that people began to understand the baptism in the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit at another level so that's what i'm talking about through the apostolic the revelation right revelation of certain truths can just come alive the we we uh, term it present truth it doesn't mean the bible has changed or the scriptures have changed no we cannot do that that would be uh, you know uh, an error but with the integrity of scripture as the holy spirit breathes uh, on us as the move of god is upon us there is a deeper understanding or an understanding at another level and god generally does that so apostles are the ones who usually lead the way when it comes to uh, such revelation okay so that also is uh, part of the apostolic ministry so far what did we see they call to specific work specific people they uh, have a distinct work of establishing or building there are open doors and open and uh, they open up new territories for the gospel they are equipped with power gifts they are uh, the ones who have revelatory gifts and let's move on few more features here they establish strong leadership they have uh, they are equipped sorry with strong leadership and administrative capacities uh, why is this okay governments okay apostolic uh, has to do with governments let's quickly read um First Corinthians chapter twelve and verse twenty-eight. Can somebody please uh, turn to that? First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty-eight. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church: first are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. Yes, thank, thank you, Jeffina. So over here. we see that god has appointed these in the church first apostles second prophets okay and then it goes on and we'll understand the meaning of it it's not a, a gradation of the ministry gifts but it's more like generally the apostle is the one you know the who makes the way so that's why uh, we have the apostle listed there first and then you know the rest of the gifts follow over there so when we look at this we recognize that why does god you know appoint in this way they kind of uh, come first because they are stepping into the open door they have the mindset that yes this can be done uh, or um, they are pioneers you know that word pioneer best describes somebody who is an apostle they think of new ways of uh, taking the gospel out 
Okay, so for example, again coming to today's today's terminology, how about doing something in technology for the gospel? Now, ordinarily we may not think that we will we will maximize technology, but the apostolic things like that. Why not go into new territory? Why not use technology? Why not do this? Why not do that? So uh, they have strong, you know, those uh, uh, how do you say they pioneer. But to actually make it happen in a proper way, they also carry uh, governmental and administrative capabilities. Okay, so that's how they're able to steer, they're able to pilot or direct the work of God. So governments is the word uh, kuber, and that uh, means steer. And they are able to steer things forward. And that's how they are. So generally, when we talk about apostle or you look at any apostle, you might uh, think that, hey, strong personality, very determined, very clear very uh you could say like a possibility thinker right visionary so that kind of that kind of a picture comes to our mind because they they are capable of heading in a new direction and they carry the ability to lead people they carry the ability to uh, provide administrative support to the uh, people who are following okay so that is a feature of the apostolic governmental authority over churches so in the uh, bible when we look at the churches that were established as i already said apostle james he uh, was the one who was heading up the jerusalem council when certain decisions were made in acts chapter 15 um, but even otherwise as you read the writings of paul he was instructing the churches he had governmental authority over the churches. He was telling them, hey, this is right. This is wrong. Do like this. Don't do like that. You know, I'm pleased that you're doing like this, but I'm so sad that you're not uh, honoring the Lord. So what is he doing? He's guiding, right? He's guiding. He's helping them stay aligned to the purpose of God. So uh, appointing leaders, uh, writing letters why do they write letters they have established churches people are born again that's wonderful let's move on no you don't see that in the early church they established churches but even when paul has gone far away he is you know a couple of years ahead what does he do he's still thinking oh what happened to the church in philippi what happened to the church over here what happened to the church i heard that there's a church in in rome he's never even been to the church in rome but he writes to them to tell them, you know, these are the things about grace. These are the things about law, teaching them the truth, guiding them, having that governmental authority to instruct them, right? Because he carries a responsibility of establishing the churches uh, in, in the right kind of, uh, uh, if you will, blueprint. You know, we've done that in the House of God course, where we understand what the church is supposed to be. And an apostle carries that responsibility to ensure that the churches are aligned to the word of God, aligned to the doctrine. When things go right, wow. When things don't go right, sometimes they can be quite firm in uh, you know, uh, uh, instructing them and correcting them as well. Uh, of course, in a loving way, which is how uh, Paul actually uh, guides us. So. These are all things that they do as far as the governmental, exercising governmental authority over the church is concerned. Okay, and there are a lot of scriptures here. I would suggest that you, you go back and read them up. So even here, the scriptures mention appointing local leadership. There are scriptures establishing divine order in the church. You know, how should you take communion? What is the right way of taking communion? He gave them instructions, clear instructions. Then uh, bringing correction. He did that even from a distance sometimes he had to tell them oh corinthians you are so good in the gifts of the spirit but you're also carnal okay come on this is how you should be uh, this is how you should operate in the gifts of the spirit so he brought correction he had responsibility to care for the churches as well so uh, you know we see how he uh, wrote in a caring way to the people uh, there were also collections being taken to uh, take right to churches that were afflicted so a lot a lot is uh, needed 
to be done as, as somebody who carries governmental authority and the apostles actually did it uh, now what are some of the other things that they did so you notice there's so much that they're doing so when we think of the apostolic the picture we get is very strong very decisive having a direction um, then establishing things as per the word of god okay uh, pioneering they're moving in new territory and then uh, establishing the kingdom uh, good administrative capacity so it's it's a really powerful powerful calling that god calls uh, people into uh, now along with all this there are those other features of they are able to teach preach because when you look at people like peter john uh, you know james paul they were good teachers they taught they instructed they strengthened the churches uh, they also like when you look at apostle paul he prayed for the churches so these are all other accompanying things they teach they pray right they really care for the church enough to actually pray for the churches not that ah, i established the church in philippi now let me move on i have another you know i have a list of churches under my name that's not good enough but they really really pray they want to see those churches uh, having that that um, you know character of jesus so hard work to ensure that the churches are built the right way that is the apostolic calling uh, what else do they do they are interested in imparting and activating spiritual gifts we uh, see paul writing to the roman church and he says you know i really look forward that i may come to you that i may impart a gift right that i may impart gifts to you uh, and that is the heart of paul where he wants them to go to the next level in the operation of the spiritual gifts okay so uh, they desire to strengthen the church in all these ways uh, then they are involved in taking the gospel out to the lost people proclaiming the gospel that we've already seen so uh, under the apostolic you would see that sometimes in, in people who carry this the kind of a calling they make big decisions how do i reach the nation in a short period of time okay i come up with this uh, of course being led by god but they are very bold uh, very radical yeah, radical is the word uh, that uh, they want to reach isn't it uh, they are willing to to go the extra mile they are willing to travel they are willing to take risks uh, so this this is how it it comes across so the apostolic calling has this image of uh, if if you i don't know how to say it but then when you have let's say a forest area okay and uh, that forest area is to be cleared up uh, for a building to be built there then you know how you have machines powerful machines which are used to cut down maybe tall trees and they're just breaking into the forest that's the picture you get of the apostolic ministry entering new territory even if people say you can't do it the the spirit they carry is yeah i can do it god is telling me to do it i'll go very bold okay so that's the picture you know of the apostolic calling and the apostolic ministry and of course this uh, this is the ultimate way in which it looks but we can have expressions of it you can even have a very mellow and a calm person as an apostle as well it's not about the personality it's about the grace that they carry to do things for the kingdom of god the way they can extend the kingdom establish uh, the people of god in the word of god in things of god so on and so forth okay, but the spiritual sense it's the picture we should have we say apostolic is pioneer okay pioneer taking new territories establishing kingdom values so that's the picture that we should have in our minds so what else do we see some of the other features of apostles they were able to uh, work with other apostles so notice how uh, paul he always lists out oh i want to thank so and so i want to thank uh, uh, you know uh, this apostle or that leader so in the early church these apostles were were not 
like the soul leaders where somewhere we get this picture that ha huh, everyone was going behind the paul and paul is the ultimate there's nobody else not true and we see uh, they were working with others also uh, there were not just other apostles that uh, paul was associated with but there were um, you know elders in the church so there are all these positions of leadership so it's more like a teamwork yeah the calling is a strong calling but how do you think you can establish a work unless you know how to uh, relate with a whole set of people a whole bunch of people so uh, that is something that we see in scripture so today in our uh, uh, times somewhere we have this understanding oh the apostle is a very strong personality they will lead everything on their own it won't work and it that's not the example we get in the bible so apostles they related with other apostles you see even when that circumcision issue happened paul he took it to the jerusalem uh, he took it to jerusalem apostles those apostles also did not decide on their own uh, they said okay let's have a council so other leaders elders were also there in that team so there was a huge team of leaders who sat and discussed then uh, as the holy spirit if you read that passage you see there they made a decision as the holy pleased the holy spirit and it pleased everyone so with consensus they made decisions so there was an incredible teamwork which also happened right so uh, apostles calling is not like a stand alone calling now moving on apostles uh, they were the target of uh, uh, persecution that we have said uh, and especially for the apostle there were challenges like if you look at the journey of paul even in corinth there was a time when he only became very afraid because of the kind of opposition that was rising up and uh, you know people the mobs were rising up against him uh, and at that time you read that god came to him and said don't be afraid you know i have others here so god only had to encourage him so being an apostle and um, you know pioneering things may not always be easy so there are what we term as the tough things of apostleship uh, where it can get very hard at some points but god gives the grace right but these apostles uh, need to have uh, that ability to depend on god in in the, in these difficult times where maybe you are not able to penetrate into a territory or um, gone there and then there are other challenges or there's persecution the people are rising up against us whatever it is to be able to bear all that and still keep the work going um, there we, we talk about the sufferings of apostleship okay one needs to have that ability to not give up yeah and generally apostles as we see in the bible they became um, mentors they became you can use the term fathers to many others so when you read about uh, uh, apostle paul you also read about a timothy and a titus and you know all those other names come along why they invested in others they groomed other leaders younger leaders uh, they had to gain confidence in the work of the ministry and uh, that way what happened uh, people could follow their example and continue the work of god so if well before they left they instructed uh, those who were rising up well so you see first timothy second timothy uh, beautifully paul endless so many things which are required for timothy to prepare him so how is he uh, acting what is the role that he is taking up as a spiritual father and he also says you know timothy is like a son to me so in that manner in the spiritual sense uh, the apostles raise up many leaders okay sons and daughters if you want to call them uh, so that also is part of the apostolic calling so just want to pause here uh, any clarity coming coming through where you are able to get a picture ha huh? what is this apostolic ministry you know Uh, how long is it going to take to complete apostolic ministry i hope it's forming a picture in your mind is it okay is it okay 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 thank you john thank you thank you how about the others 
<laughs> saying, I just feel like they do everything. Uh, yeah, you could say so. Yeah, <laughs> the apostolic is like that. It's a very pioneering role. Pioneering, powerful. OK, come on, let's uh, go ahead. So now that we have uh, talked about the apo uh, apostolic and the apostle, you know, it feels like this uh, very grand personality or a person uh, that God is using to extend his kingdom. But like every other calling in the uh, in the word of God, nobody arrives, you know, right after they are born into the kingdom. We know that God is a God who takes everyone through preparation. And we have said this, the greater the calling, the greater the preparation. Okay, God takes us all through preparation, but especially when it comes to, let's say, people who are in the offices, God puts them through a lot of preparation because for the anointing of the Lord to be poured out, you need, for the new wine to be poured out, you need the new wine skin. And for the forming of the new wine skin, or new wine skin is what it's godly character. It takes a while. It takes, you know, the uh, decisions of that person the, uh, uh, to align themselves to what God is doing in their lives. So God has to work so much in that person to first prepare the person. And when the person is prepared, then they can carry the calling. They can ca carry the anointing. They can serve the Lord. Okay, So that's how God usually works. So when it comes to the forming of an apostle or the shaping up of an apostle, it doesn't happen overnight. God puts them, uh, at least from what we learn uh, in, the, in the Bible, there is a good training that the individual has to go through. So if you look at the life of Apostle Paul, this again, all of you probably have done it in fulfilling God's purpose for your life uh, book. Paul had a long journey. Okay? And it, these, this journey can be categorized, uh, as far as the apostolic is concerned, as the commissioning. So in Acts chapter 9, when he encounters uh, God, at that point came the commissioning. He, maybe even he didn't have an idea, but then we see how God speaks to Ananias and he says, oh, this man, I'm going to use him like this. So God gives that revelation to uh, Ananias. And uh, ultimately, you know, Paul understands. He uh, understands the calling, the commissioning. God is calling him to do something. So it starts with the commissioning, but that's not the end of the story. Then the grace of God has to increase on that person's life that particular calling. So the <laughs> apostolic grace increased over Paul's life. Now, in that period of the apostolic grace increasing, uh, we, we will see that all his ministry was not public. A lot of what he did was, um, you know, in an obscure kind of a setting where people didn't People didn't give him much importance. But ultimately, it was Barnabas who went. He brought him. Uh, and then we see the apostolic ministry begin to emerge right through Paul's life. And so he starts doing things. He starts going to different places. And he starts preaching. And the supernatural works of God take place. He establishes churches. He uh, instructs churches. And uh, keeps moving to new territory and, you know, uh, uh, engages in the doctrine, writes the epistles. So much work is done. That's when we, we are able to recognize, oh, look at what is coming out of his life and his ministry. This person must be an apostle. OK, so that's how the journey of the life of an apostle is. You start with commissioning. But to reach that position or calling or the fullness of that calling to be an apostle, it took years of journeying with God and working 
you know, with that grace of God upon his life to be able to do what God called him to do. So these are the sections, okay? Apostolic commissioning, apostolic grace, apostolic ministry, and finally the apostle. Now, uh, I've told you the different sections, but I'm just going to sum up the journey of Paul. We know that uh, he probably encountered uh, the Lord Jesus at the age of 33 or around thereabouts uh, in Damascus. And later, it took several years of equipping you know, before he uh, came into uh, the apostolic ministry. So what happened right after that? Uh, he received this commission. Initially, for about three years, he was in the regions of Damascus and uh, Arabia. He wanted to do ministry. We are quite clear on that when we see, when we read about him. But people were not willing to accept him because he was a persecutor turned a proclaimer of the gospel. So then people were very um, suspicious of uh, this individual known as Paul. So for three years, he just spent time in Damascus and Arabia because he was not accepted by the people. Uh, even though he wanted to talk about Jesus and what Jesus did in his life. And after this, we are told that he visited Jerusalem for 15 days. Uh, and uh, uh, even there, it was not a very friendly environment for him. People, were, wa people wanted to kill him. So then he moves on to Tarsus. That's where he stays for a while uh, and a very long while. 13 years is what is estimated uh, for Paul's time in the region of Tarsus, uh, Syria, and Cil Cilicia. So notice how he was commissioned, but three years in Damascus, Arabia, 13 years in Tarsus, Syria, Cilicia, 16 years already. Now, Paul may have thought, what is happening? You know. Uh, why why am i not an apostle yet like why am i not able to lead churches why are people not accepting me but there's a preparation right which he is going through uh, now it's towards the end of these 13 years in that uh, tarsus uh, syria cilicia region that barnabas comes and takes him to antioch one of thriving churches and there one year paul spends teaching the word of god yeah. then what happens then uh, is when you know you have uh, at the end of 17 years 17 years where god that acts chapter 13 happens when they are ministering to the lord as a as a leadership team in the church of antioch where god says okay set apart for me paul and barnabas for the ministry to which i have called them so that is the beginning of the actual apostolic ministry of Paul. Up until that time, what did Paul do? How many churches did he establish? What did he teach? We actually don't have an idea in the biblical texts. Okay. So many theologians, they term the 17 years of Paul's life as the silent years. Silent years. So from the time of the calling... Ultimately, after 17 years is when Paul is taking up the first missionary journey with Barnabas. So it's taking that much time. Now, is it going to take that much time for every apostle? We don't know. Only God knows individuals. He knows the timelines. He knows the kind of preparation they need to go through because he knows the kind of work that they have to handle. But here's the point. For any calling, God doesn't launch the person the next day. We all have to journey through our own, uh, you know, uh, plan of preparation that God has for each one of us, whatever that calling is. And if it is a great calling, if we are called into, uh, let's say, uh, I'm just using the term great calling for our understanding, but every calling is great. But especially in the offices, then there's an incredible amount of preparation that goes in. Uh, then, yes, after that 17 years, uh, you find that finally the missionary journeys start taking off and uh, the rest is history. 
okay uh, but from paul's example as an apostle we recognize that god is not in a hurry okay we may want to jump in right away but it cannot happen we have to take uh, god's path in order to fulfill any calling of god so what i will do is i think i will stop today uh, and uh, let you all think there's so much we have discussed uh, you may want to revisit uh, all these concepts again uh, maybe listen to the lectures again and let's come back next week we will uh, talk some more uh, if i'm able to summarize all the key points within next class uh, hopefully i think we can wrap up our uh, talk on apostolic ministry and uh, another thing that i'm attempting to do is i'm um, i'm attempting to put up your question paper your final question paper uh, as soon as possible so by next week i want that to be out so that you can start working on your second assignment and your first assignment marks also will will hopefully come through by next week so then you know you have enough time to study your portions well answer your uh, questions and successfully complete this course and semester okay so uh, as we stop right now any thoughts or uh, questions clarification what do you feel about the role of an apostle? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. I was eagerly waiting for this, Pastor. Uh, I'm glad to know, uh, but was know, it helpful? Was it helpful? I think it was and is, and I think it will still be helpful. Wonderful. Praise God. Okay, any questions? So, Jeffina, are you getting an idea of what an apostle who you should call an apostle dare to call anyone apostle here Okay, so uh, yeah, so Jeffina, I think she would need a little more time, and so uh, does everyone. So what we can do is we can go back and study whatever has been discussed so far. It'll give an idea, and then also, if you have any practical questions, you bring those questions next class. We'll uh, try and answer them. So for now, let's pray and uh, close would somebody like to lead in prayer please let's pray yeah Lord, we want to thank you for uh, this time of learning uh, we thank you that um, you're teaching us uh, your word in, in a, a beautiful level of oh god we pray oh god that we would understand the significance of uh, each ministry that you are revealed to us you have revealed to us in the new covenant we pray oh god that we would equip ourselves to uh, for the work of the ministry of god that um, help our lives to be an example in front of uh, people in front of uh, you oh god we pray that um, we would be placing you in all that we do lord jesus we thank you for this time of learning we humble ourselves once again before your presence in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um, and feel free in case you needed to, um, you know, leave the class and go on to the next class. I noticed Brother Success has a question, so I'll just take that question and then I will end this call. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Um, thank you, Guma. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, 
No you just asked a question and my phone, uh, my system was uh, having a little shake. Uh, the course is okay, it's very good, but I still need um, the if uh, there is a way we can also pray together because I still need that fire more. Um, uh, what about when well, we meet like this? I feel the fire, but I still need more fire. And uh, if there are another course, maybe another semester, they can put a prayer, um, prayer uh, section. That would be very, very wonderful. God, corporate prayer helps a lot in this particular uh, course and ministry. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, yes, brother, success. We understand that, and I will take your uh, feedback to our faculty. Let's see what best we can do in the coming semester. Thank you. So thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day. Uh, God bless. We'll catch up again next Wednesday. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister.